Good evening, everyone, and Merry Christmas. Welcome to a combined service for Christmas Eve with Faith Community Church and Life Transformation Church. We're very overjoyed to be with you all here this evening. Welcome to those online watching the live stream. My name is Tony, and uh, uh, along with Pratiba and Sydney and Lexi, and Kara, and all of you, we'd like to sing some songs with you, lifting up the powerful name of Jesus, who became flesh. And as we celebrate the incarnation tonight, help us to, we, we want to set aside our anxieties and focus our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So please stand and join us. Please read along with me as we light the first Advent candle. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before ye, as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Joe. To the one the Lord is come, let that receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and hell and heaven and nature. Sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sin and sorrow grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. Far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace. 
Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ by high is heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity. Please a man with man to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn King. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to all He brings. Risen with healing in His wings. Mild He lays His glory by. Born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth. Born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Continue reading with me. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on peace for those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Yeah. 
you for this indescribable gift of your word incarnate. Come in a humble manner as a, as a babe, uh, cruci crucified before the foundation of the world, the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Uh, Heavenly Father, as you, as your Holy Spirit hovered over the waters at the beginning of creation, you knew full well uh, what would take place and what would the cost be, yet you love us dearly. You made us all in your image and after your likeness and gave us dignity and worth and gave, a, gave your life for us that because of our sin, we broke our relationship with you. We disobeyed. And Jesus made a way, the only way, through his death and resurrection. So, Heavenly Father, I pray for anyone here who has not received Jesus as Lord and Savior, may Heavenly Father, may you draw them to Jesus and enable them to be born again. It's only by your will that this occurs, Heavenly Father. And uh, we pray for each one here tonight that uh, they're inspired and challenged and um, given a sense of peace despite all the things that are happening around us, a peace that can only be found in the Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Now we have a Life at Faith announcements with Sean. Good evening. And I'm so glad I, thought I get that right. Normally I say good morning, so I'm glad I got that right. Thank you for being here on this very special evening with a joint service between Life Community Church and Life Transformation. We are so happy that you guys are here with us serving and celebrating the Lord's birthday with us this evening. We have lots of things going on, lots of exciting things going on. I am the youth director here at Faith Community Church, so I have a very special dear to my heart for Winter Jam. That's going to be coming up for all of our youth here. And whether if you're online, whether if you're here with us tonight, if you're part of the youth, we'd love for you to join us. That's going to be, uh, that's going to be January 8th. That's a Saturday. It's only $10 for an awesome concert night. I think there's like eight different bands. Um, so you'll want to join us with that. 
And then February 4th and 5th, guys, you're not going to want to miss it. We're going to have a men's retreat. And this is just a great, just a great short weekend for guys to be able to get together and be men. A chance to be able to, you know, loosen the weight, buckle down a little bit. Maybe, I don't know, let out a couple farts. I don't know. Um, maybe not. <laughs> um, but it's going to be a great time that we can just be transparent with one another as men. So you're, not, you're going to want to go online and sign up for that. Also, this coming Tuesday, December 28th, we're going to have a blood drive here at Faith Community Church. And guys, there is, I don't know if you know this or not, but there is a blood shortage here, and not only here in the U.S., but across the world. And this is just a great, simple opportunity, just as the Lord gave his blood so that we can have life. This is a simple way for us to give a little bit of blood so that we can help save a lot, someone else's life as well. This coming Sunday, there will be no in-person service here at Faith Community Church. You can come if you want to, but you're going to be worshiping on your own outside the doors because you're not going to be able to get in. But there is going to be an online service available for you. It's going to be a short devo devotion by Eric Tober. Um, you can jump on our website to be able to see that and have that available to you. I don't know what it's going to be, but knowing Eric, it will be good and worthwhile watching. At Faith Communion Church, there are three simple ways that you can give online. You can go to fccdublin.com slash give. You can text at 84321. Again, you can text at 84321. Or you can use the Church Center app. If you don't already have that downloaded onto your devices, we strongly encourage you to do so. It's one of the main forms that we share the all the information happening at Life Community Church. Also, too, again, this is a joint service. We love being able to share our building with those who are spreading the love of Christ along others. So you can also give at Life Transformation by going to their website and on their gift page as well. They are a church plant here within the Dublin Columbus area, and we are excited that they are planting a church right here within our building, and we continually pray that the Lord would give, grant them favor. So at this point in time, I just want to take a brief moment and pray for our service this evening and, and that we offer our time up to the Lord. So, Father, we do thank you that we can come in this building and worship you freely. We're those in this world who have to do it in secret. We pray for our brothers in Christ who are suffering persecution around the world. But they gather here still together to celebrate the birth of the greatest men in that ever walked this planet, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Father, we offer this night up to you, and we ask that the songs that we sing, the words that we say, the things that we do would be a reflection of your Son this evening. And we do pray these things all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now... Welcome back up to the stage, Lexi, for another awesome song for us. I've heard about this baby boy who's came to earth to bring us joy and I just want to sing this song to you and it goes like this the fourth the fifth the minor fall and the major lift a powerful king composed and hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. 
A couple came to Bethlehem expecting child. They searched the inn to find a place for you were coming soon. And there was no room for them to stay. So in a manger filled with hay, God's only son was born. Oh, hallelujah. 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 The shepherds left their flocks by night to see this baby wrapped in light. A host of angels led them all to you. It was just as the angels had said, you'll find a man, a manger bed, a man you well and say. To Bethlehem, the wise men three came many miles and journeyed long for you. And to the place at which you were, their frankincense and gold and myrrh, they gave to you and cried out, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! This baby boy would grow to be a man who would one day die for me and you. That rugged cross, the snails and you, that rugged cross was my cross too. Still every breath you drew was hallelujah, hallelujah. And Keely, also, thank you for that, for being able to provide that. Hi, Merry Christmas. How are you all doing? My name's Eric Tober, if you don't know me, but I think most of you do. I'm the pastor of Faith Community Church, but the real star of the show here is David Williams. <laughs> and uh, we're going to tag team, but David, I think you go first, right? You're first. You're first. You're first up. Sound, sound, no. Testing, one, two. There you go. Maybe. You're on. Ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Let me put this out of the way. Testing, one, two. This is a oops, is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Here. 
Here I am. <laughs> Technical genius. We actually got started a little early, so we're giving the, myself and Pastor Eric a little more time to preach. With Pastor <laughs> Eric, it was his prayer that he wanted that to happen. He said he needed about five more minutes, and so um, he got his prayer was answered. So there you go. I'm praying for you guys as he gets up to do what we're going to do here. scripture here. Isaiah 9, verse 6. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Follow along whatever version the Lord has blessed you to have. And it reads as follows. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and the peace, there will be no end. And upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with the judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord and the host of them will perform this. We want to tag this text with a title and talk about, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The gift that keeps on giving. The gift that keeps on giving. As we sat and pondered and talked about what we should talk about today at another Christmas Eve service, and you probably have been in church just for a little while, you heard a whole bunch of them. You probably have them listed out in your Bible, but we want to try to do something just a tad bit different, but you know, you might have heard this before, the gift keeps on giving you, like the energized but it keeps going and going and going and going. As your children open up toys tomorrow, I hope you got some batteries. If you didn't forget, you have no batteries, sorry about your luck. It's COVID. No, everybody's closed down, and so you'll be <laughs> stuck with the toys, and your kids will be complaining all day because you didn't get the batteries that your wife told you to get 10 times, but you didn't put it on your list, and so you're in trouble with the whole family. I'm not know who I'm talking to, but that's for somebody out there. Not, maybe not here, but out there on live, Facebook Live somewhere, you know, somebody has forgotten some batteries. And so... The gift that keeps on giving. What is the gift that keeps on giving? You know, I never got a gift that kept on giving. You know, as you know, I had gifts and opened them up on Christmas. And by the time me and my brothers tore in all our gifts, you know, we played for them for about a week, and then they were done. That gift didn't keep giving. Those cars broke. The, the dump truck, you know, the thing wouldn't lift up again. You know, yeah, my daughter, her dials, you know, the heads would come off, the arm would come off. She'll lose part of the dress, the dress is, one dress is here, she's dressing up a doll and got doll, got on all kind of clothes on, it's mismatched and all, you know, things is getting less lost because it's Christmas, you know, and things don't last always, you know, and so we have to understand that things don't last always, so, but we have a gift in the body of Christ as believers that keeps on giving. Amen. And we don't talk about taxes, text with a tie, we said the gift keeps on giving. The first point we want to make is the ultimate giver. Now, how can we talk about, celebrate this wonderful gift that we have in the Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has come, who was born, to, unto us who was born, the Son, what? They call him wonderful, counselor, mighty God. All that stuff we celebrate, people are all over the world celebrating Christmas. You know, trees are decorated, you know, gifts are given, all kinds of stuff. We're talking about Jesus, but some people have forgotten to take the Christ out of Christmas. But here, we as believers, we understand that, you know, without Christ, there is no Christmas. Mm -hmm. And so we understand who is the ultimate giver. You say, well, Williams, we know you're going to talk about, okay, Jesus died on the cross. He, he was beaten. He, 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 was, he was bloody. They hung him on the cross. He died there for your sins and for mine. And we got that. That's the ultimate giver there. Mm -hmm. How else can you Amen. talk about Jesus not talk about the giver? The, the, he gave his only life. His mm. life mm. for us, mm. that you and I can have that life. Amen. And so we, but we can't talk about the gift without talking about the ultimate giver. Mm. And what's the ultimate giver? For God so loved the world mm. that he, God, gave you and I his son, that we believe in him. Well, we should have everlasting, we should want perish without everlasting life. And so we can't talk about the gift 
without talking about the ultimate giver. And the ultimate giver is God, mm. who gave mm. us life. We can't celebrate the gift and forget about the giver. Now, I know we, well, I better not say that. Um, people who receive gifts, you know, and you receive a gift, and you want to celebrate, you know, the, you looking at the gift, you know. You're, you might buy a purse or something like that. So I bought my wife a purse, I did. That was not this year, but I did. <laughs> but I bought her a purse, you know. It was Michael Kors purse too, you know. It was just not just any other purse, you know. Just let you know that, you know, so. And I would be really sad if my wife just cherished this purse. If she would, you know, put some leather condition on a purse. And she kept talking about the purse and wouldn't tell me thank you. Mm. Mm. I gave her the purse. <laughs> I worked hard for that money. And she's not going to say anything to me about the purse? Mm. I got a problem right now with it. <laughs> Why? Because what? I can't, you cannot give, I can't give you something. And I'll give you something, I mean I care about you. Mm. None of us in here have gifts with people we don't care about. I know, I know y'all say, you know, y'all been in church all your life, you, you know, everybody's your friend. But there's a two or three people at your job that you don't like, and you was like, I would never give them nothing, <laughs> ever. You know, you may have prayed the benediction, may the Lord watch between me and thee. While we ask, y'all look that up in the Bible, you're going to catch that when you get home. And so we have the ultimate giver, which is God. Hmm. And don't ever forget that we can't celebrate the gift hmm. without celebrating the giver. He's the ultimate giver, and that's God. Amen. I got this microphone. Oh, that's right. You do. You yeah, do. yeah. Well, I, I, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of Lights, we know. And, uh, but I want to also point out that sometimes uh, there are just good gifts that we all get. And uh, before I jump into my part, I thank God for new friends and my friend, uh, Pastor David Williams and a good fellowship we have. Psalm 133 in verse 1 says, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. And I, I just love you and I appreciate you and I'm glad we could do this together. So it's awesome. So the gift that keeps on giving. And so yes, we know the answer is Jesus, but let's do a little reflection. And my part is the ultimate gift. So there is the ultimate giver, and I like that because we forget that God gives us all the gifts. But the ultimate gift, what is the ultimate gift? Well, the ultimate gift should have a fit. It should fit, right? Um, for the first 10 years of my marriage, we visited my dear mother-in-law, Mary, and uh, all the in-laws, all those who were married into the family, we got what I call the generic gifts. You know? You know what I'm talking about? They're the generic gifts. I, uh, they're shirt and ties for the guys that were clearly on the sale rack. Uh, there wasn't a lot of thought about it. It was, you know, they just a bunch of stuff, and it, I'm not even sure that she said, well, Eric likes the color or anything. It was just, we got these shirt and ties. It was pretty regular. And I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. Love Mom Collier. Uh, she was seeking to be practical and just provide some practical needs. You always need a shirt and tie. But about 10 years into the family... I got a different set of gifts. I got a book about Michael Jordan. Now that was a gift that fit because I'm a basketball guy. And now it wasn't the ultimate gift. I, I assure you there are better gifts um, and there's a better gift coming of course. But my point is an ultimate gift has to have an ultimate fit. The Chris, this Christmas, I got a book delivered by Amazon from my son, Derek, and daughter-in-law, Casey, and it's entitled The President and Freedom Fighter. It's Abraham Lincoln, Frederick, Frederick Douglass, and their battle to save America's soul. This book fits me. It fits me because they know I'm a big Abraham Lincoln fan, and I'm doing a lot that, that I feel like I could try to do in, in my ministry circles to try to integrate faith and government and work on issues related to racism and all of that, but... Here's another question. We're talking about fit. What's the best gift that you've ever been given at Christmas time? You pause and think for a moment. It's the best material, earthly gift. Doesn't have to be super spiritual. What's the best gift that you were given? 
How did you feel when you opened up that present and you said, wow, I can't believe it. I got this? You gave me this? This is a great fit. This is awesome. This is, a, this is the best gift I've ever been given. But how long did that feeling last? How long did it last? Now, I've started my new book that Derek and Casey got me, but eventually I'm going to finish it, and it's going to go on my shelf with the book about Michael Jordan. It won't last. No gift on earth will last. It has to have the ultimate fit. So what's the ultimate great fit for all of humanity? What is the fit? What do you think it is? Give me some feedback. Talk to me. What's the ultimate need of humanity? And why is that? Because we die. Because of death. Our, our condition, everybody's condition, is that we're dying. Life is but a vapor. It appears for a little while and gone. Vanishes. And you may survive or, or uh, avoid COVID, but you will still die one day in the future. There's a day pegged for each one of us. I was at a funeral this past week. Earl Miller, 87. What was interesting about Earl and all the faithfulness is that though he transferred to a nursing home, which is not always the most exciting thing to do in life, I would guess. As we get older, we think, feel like things are passing by, and as we transfer into this nursing home, it's, we, this is the last quarter. This is the last lap. The thing about Earl was he didn't really change in spirit. His spirit was still the same. Even though you changed the circumstance, the joy of the Lord was clearly this man's strength. And, and the funeral, they said, his kids said, material things never meant anything to him. He was a true missionary at heart. Planted four churches in the Philippines. A great big Swedish looking guy, six foot three, that didn't fit the culture of the Philippines. And yet that was God's gift to work and move and, and bring about blessing through him. But his life ended. No matter how good it was or no matter good your life or my life, hence the ultimate gift is to be saved, as you've mentioned, from death. From death. And more accurately, the second death, this eternal conscious suffering, this, etern this entering into eternity. Enter the, the prophecy of the ultimate gift. And this interesting, this Isaiah 9, 1 through 7. A child is the gift, a son. And not, it's not a son born into an, a family. This says it's a son born into a nation. It's the whole nation receives a, a gift. It's all peoples. And we know that. And, and the prophecy, in that prophecy, it speaks of a light has dawned on the Gentiles, not just the Jews, opening up even right there. But a son, who's a son? Why a son? This gift that keeps on giving, it's a line of a legacy. Um, obviously, a humility. Nobody thinks of a great gift as just maybe a, a baby. What is a baby? And, and he's the gift, and yet he's a baby? What can he do for me? I'm going to have to do for him. But this humility that comes. And the nation in the context is suffering, but there's hope in the future. And unto this the Son is given. So obviously we prayed about this. Have you received this gift of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And I might say it this way. Maybe you're saved. You got the lifeguard part of the deal. He saved you from the hells of fire, uh, fires of hell. He's, he's clearly brought you there. But is he king? Is he king of your life? Unto us a son is born, unto us a child is given. And the kingdom, this kingdom, the government will be on his shoulders. Government is inept. It doesn't have the ability to... Have you studied the governments of the world? Have you had any... I've been doing a, a reading through a two-volume church history on that my daughter gave me last Christmas. And, and one of the things that it, it paraded through was all of Europe throughout the Middle Ages and all that, and no government can get it right. None of the governments get it right. No, are any governments getting it right? I mean, you could throw in a Republican, you can throw in a Democrat, it doesn't matter. The governments never get it right. But this, this son, this child, the government will be on his shoulders and there's a kingdom that we're going to live in. Talk about an ultimate gift. Not just the son... Not just the kingdom to live in, but the ultimate power, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, all available today. 
That's not someday in the future. That's right now. And then this ultimate prophecy fulfilled. He'll reign on David's throne and over his kingdom. Don't keep your eye on Washington, D.C. Keep your eye on Jerusalem. Watch for Jerusalem. When you hear talk of a rebuilt temple, when you hear the day when they make the announcement that they're going to rebuild the temple, they've been raising money for over a decade, they're blueprints for it. When the day comes, lift up your eyes. Be ready, for he's coming back to set up his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness, not with force, but with true justice and true righteousness. That's the ultimate, ultimate gift, Jesus. That was good. I might have to steal his nose up here. Pastor Eric's doing a wonderful job. Our next point um, that we both tag team together is the best gift that we ever received. And this gets a little personal for us both because um, it's pretty much kind of our testimony, kind of, sort of. Um, my wife is, is, is lovely. She's pretty. Um, she's nice on occasions, um, on most occasions. I'll pay for that later on. Don't worry about it. It's a, <laughs> I have a comfortable couch, and so it's good. Um, my daughter is lovely. She's a freshman, teenager. Pray for us. Um, she's, but she's good on most occasions, you know. Um, what, what other gift we could have that God would bless us to have a child that partake in procreation of the children. And all the things are nice. You know, my mom is still living, so I can say my mom, oh, best gift ever. And, those things are good. Mom is watching too, and so, and she's probably crying right now, but it's all good. Um, but the best gift that I ever received is the gift of salvation. Amen. The gift that, you know, um, I ended up, I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and I came down to, the, uh, to Columbus, Ohio, running from my calling. And I didn't attend church for two years. Mm. And I tried real hard to disqualify myself. Y'all didn't hear me. I tried real hard. Mm. And I had a whole lot of fun doing it. But when I would get back home and, you know, get, in my, get to get in my bed, you know, and praying that, you know, that the Lord would watch over us once again and kept us from out here in these streets, that God would still whisper in my ear, I still called you. Mm. I still love you. Mm. And you're still mine. Mm. I'll get the pillow, Mike, and put it over my head. And I didn't want to hear that. It's like I could mute God out. And I thought about all the stuff that I did. And when I finally said yes, and finally started giving, and giving my life back to Christ and started walking in the way, you know, my parents, I was born and raised in church. My uncle was a pastor at our church. My parents met at the church. Both sides of my family went to the church. I was a church kid. Mm. But I, I wanted nothing to do with church mm. or church people. Mm. All these holy folk outside smoking cigarettes, doing all kind of stuff. You know, nothing wrong with that. You, hey, you, that's your temple. You want to do what you want. But I'm saying... I saw the hypocrisy of the church, that's what I'm saying. Mm. And didn't want nothing to do with it. But my parents had trained me up. As the Bible says, train up a child and where they go, and when they get old, they won't depart. You know, and I'm still not old, but you know, I did come back. For all y'all who got, have kids out there and you wondering what they're gonna do, and you didn't raise them right, and you done taught them, you know, the Bible and all that kind of brought them in Sunday school, and, and they just live another. Don't worry about it. Just keep praying for them. You know, one thing I had was praying parents, praying grandparents, that when David Anthony Williams didn't have sense enough to pray for himself, my mother and my father were praying for me, mm. to watch over me, that I would too now accept his salvation, this wonderful gift, the best gift I could ever receive. And I don't have time enough to tell you all the stuff that I've done and places I've been. Some of them I'm ashamed of. 
But God still loved me enough to say, hey, I still want to use you. Because what I understand about God, he doesn't use perfect people. He used crack pots. And all of us are in here are crack pots. Mm. No one in here has a halo over their head. Mm. The best gift I ever received was God's love mm. and the salvation. Mm. That I can come, no matter how I came, tore up from the floor up. He accepted me just like I was. And if you're out there tonight and you listen to this Christmas Eve service, you say, man, you don't know stuff. You don't know the stuff I've done. And I don't care where you went to bed last night, where you woke up this morning. I don't care if you high as a kite right now. God still loves you. He has a Amen. plan and a purpose for your life. Amen. Amen. And don't you get that twisted. Amen. That's the best gift I ever received. The gift of God's love and the salvation, which is free. I don't care what side of the trash you grew up on. Inner city, outer city, rural, 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 backwoods, don't matter. God has a plan for you. That's the best gift that I received ever. Amen. Amen, Amen brother. Amen. Amen. Well, this is obviously testimony time, and we trust that you have a testimony. We, and we're only sharing our testimony that you may have a testimony. And so, uh, best gift ever for me? Well, I've been blessed with many gifts. I had a faithful mom who raised me, faithful, single mom, but I look back and she was just faithful to save, to uh, raise me and to kind of save me, yes, from perhaps some directions I could have gone. Um, two grandparents, grandparents are so influential. I only had Grandpa Robinson for two years, but those two years had an impact and a kind of an impression on my life because this man raised a crippled son his entire life. His father had left and he had, at eighth grade, gone out and gone to work and tried to care for the family. And when I look back at his life and all that he experienced, it was much harder than anything I've ever experienced. But he was a man of character. And you can see it. It's reflected now. Um, it, it comes down through the, the history, the, the little bits of information that you get and what people talked about. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for two uncles. Again, one, Uncle Charlie, though crippled, uh, probably one of the persons that God used in my life to just continually teach me, continually speak to me um, through Uncle Charlie's life. And then uh, even Uncle Ken. Um, God put a strong man in my life to give me uh, direction and help me. And so I'm very grateful for these gifts that he gave. I'm grateful for my wife, Chris. The Bible says a good wife is a gift from God. And... Uh, Boy, I'm grateful for all she put up with. <laughs> and um, no, no understanding about how to love and care for a wife. No understanding about how to lead a family. And so thanks for the first 10 years. That was, that was yeah, it was hard. I'm thankful for my kids. Uh, Jessica, Heather, and Derek, and, and our, our uh, other kids that have married into the family. Aaron, Ben, and Casey, and... For our grandkids, LJ, Sophia, and Ava, and I think and I realize that one day when I leave this earth, that's really all I'm leaving. That's all I'm leaving. I'm, that's, that's what's really important. And whatever kinds of influences I can have in our life and their lives. But my best gift, my best gift is when I believe that Jesus, Jesus was wanting to save me. And that it was personal. Raised in a church, heard the hymns. Um, heard the Sunday school lessons, knew the stories, was confirmed, but had never really come to a personal decision to receive Christ as my Savior. Uh, kind of a str strange way, October 30th, 1977, I was 15 years of age. The event was called a Night of Terror at a Grace Baptist Church. Um, a haunted woods out in the middle of the farm fields. And yet that was the night that the Spirit of God reached down and saved me. He, he transformed me. He gave a kid who wasn't that interested really even in education. You needed a C to play basketball, so I got C's. But all of a sudden, I had a thirst and a hunger for God's Word that the Spirit of God prompted within me. And we're talking the King James Version here, the these and the thous. And I couldn't stop reading God's Word. And that was just a babe sucking in the milk of God's word as God birthed me into his kingdom. And it's clear. 
and it hasn't been always uh, a smooth ride, and I haven't always done what God wanted to do, even as a pastor. Um, you can ask my kids. They'll confirm that. But God saved me. He turned me around. And the best gift I've ever received is Jesus is my Savior. And the thing that we long for most is to see him face to face. And I don't just read about Jesus. I have read my Bible a lot. Um, probably more than most. It's over 30 times. I have read lots and lots and lots of books. But I am very much at the point where I'm not as interested in another study on another book of the Bible. I'm just not. But I am interested in the day that I will see him face to face. I have lots of books on my shelf. But Jesus has been with me all my life long. And he has promised to never leave me or forsake me. I'm part of his kingdom. I'm a citizen of heaven. I know that. And he's the gift that continues to keep on giving and giving and giving. And he's not a book on a shelf. Amen. He is a real person who has intersected my life so many times when I reflect back on it. So many times. I'm not necessarily a Charlie Brown guy, but I like this little cartoon that I saw on Facebook. And I think we have it up here. And so that's my, my prayer for all of you. Um, do you know Jesus as your Savior? Do you know him as your Lord? We pray, David and I, that you'll seek him. Seek him this day. We're going to sing one more song, Silent Night. Um, but we're just going to, as they come and prepare for that, um, Brother David. I want to say about one more gift. It's not close to Jesus, but it's almost close to Jesus. My friendship here with Pastor Eric, uh, his lovely wife, Chris, uh, them to open up the doors and Faith Community Church for you guys to open up your doors and allow us to worship here with no restraints, no restraints, just kind of use it and, and do God's work. Um, for that, we are forever grateful. You guys will have forever be in our hearts and our prayers and our thoughts. And we just want to say thank you from the bottom of my big old heart. And before my eyes start sweating, I'm going to stop right there. Yeah, we love you, brother. We love you. We love, you. love you. All right. So a little brief history on the song Silent Night. It was written in Austria in the early 1800s in a small church that had an organ. And for some reason, the night they were going to do it, the organ wouldn't work. So the musician had to get out his acoustic guitar. And so the first time they played it was on, a, on an acoustic guitar. Uh, we kind of have the same parallel uh, going on tonight. We were going to have uh, someone on piano, but David got sick with COVID uh, just the other day. So uh, we're stuck with me on guitar. So, so we have, please stand and join us. We'll read one more scripture passage as we prepare for the last song. That's fine. You can read with me. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I'm going to sing this first verse in German and then join with me on the second.
Stille Nacht, heilige Nacht, alles schläft, einsam war, nur das traute hoch, heilige Paar. Hol der Knabe im lockigen Haar, schlaf in himmlischer Ruhe, schlaf in himmlischer Ruhe. this time together, uh, to join our hearts together with you and, uh, and look into your word and hear testimonies and sing songs, songs of your praise um, as we wonder about the incarnation and how is it possible. But you did it for all things with you are possible, Heavenly Father. Help us to enjoy this celebration of the birth of Jesus and help us to uh, make him king of our lives for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. You are dismissed.